Okay, friends. As I said, we'll continue to admit people as they come. I'm excited to have each of you here. Um, some of you I, I know fairly well, um, and um, some of you maybe just know me more than I know you because you receive information from me quite often. Uh, my name is Brian Coffey. Uh, I am the director of Unified Programs at Special Olympics Iowa, and I've been on staff here um, for a little over four years, started in January 2017, and have um, really loved and enjoyed what we do here with our programs. Um, and a little bit of background, very quickly, I started my um, knowledge and learning of Special Olympics in 2004 as a unified partner and volunteer and assistant coach in Southern Iowa. And then I had an internship in 2012, and then later in 2017 came back as a full-time staff member in the role that I currently am right now. Um, so I'm excited, excited to have you all here. I'm excited that we've been working together as um, educators and um, nonprofit and school staff all across the state of Iowa to do many things, not just develop uh, programmings that would allow sports opportunities, but also to, to develop programs that would encourage students to learn more about inclusion and be advocates for themselves as well as for their friends. I would like to introduce um, our um, CEO and president of Special Olympics Iowa, um, Mr. John Cleagle. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for all the hard work that you and Lexi have done over the last four and a half for you and two for Lexi. Lexi's moving, Lexi O'Brien's moving on to impact the world nationally, uh, going to work for Special Olympics North America. So good luck. But I'm John Clegel. I'm the president and CEO of Special Olympics Iowa. And Unified Champion Schools Respect Week is really the thing that gets me going um, because I realize the impact that it has not only on our you know, Special Olympics athletes, but the unified partners, the entire community, and the educators are the ones that kind of directly impact the quality of the programming, helping to manage the student leaders within that organization, within the schools, and just the complete cultural change that you guys can make. Um, my journey within Special Olympics of this world actually started 25 years ago this March. I have a daughter uh, with Down syndrome. She was born. March 15th of 96. And immediately my wife and I's concerns were, is she gonna get picked on when she's of school age? I know some of you aren't as old as I am, but go back to the eighties and uh, some of the things that happened in schools, you educators have through the years changed the culture within the school and the way people are accepted. So I thank you guys for everything that you've done. Our daughter had nothing but a positive experience um, and it was just a blessing. And I think educators played by far one of the biggest roles in that. So thank you all. Brian, you're on mute. I am on mute, silly me. <laughs> wow, good job. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> I'm actually going to um, maybe invite Lexi just to kind of tell us who you are because I, I know a lot of people here at Special Olympics Iowa have seen your name, they've seen you at events, um, but there's an important transition that John referenced. So maybe you can tell us a little about that. Yeah, so I've had a really great experience with Special Olympics as a whole organization. And I, I started my time at Special Olympics Iowa just a little bit over two years ago. Brian had done an incredible job growing the program at Special Olympics Iowa within Unified Champion Schools. Uh, a lot of growth in the K-12 programming and there was a really strong college program getting started at the time, but you know, you can only put so much time and energy and love into one spot. So they decided to bring me on. And I had the great opportunity to uh, learn alongside Brian uh, all of the ins and outs of uh, Unified Champion Schools in Iowa, K-12 and college and university. I primarily had my focus on with colleges and universities. So uh, even just the progression that I've noticed uh, with educators and even, you know, the experiences that kids have, no matter at, at what age level, 
there's really that carrying principle that they're going to take with them to their next level of education. So there, there really is a lot of value in uh, the development with, with educators and, and you guys do so much. So, so thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lexi. Um, yeah, Lexi's been very instrumental in the last couple of years and um, we're excited, but sad. We're all pretty mixed emotion to see you make your transition, but we're happy that you're still staying in the world of Special Olympics. It's because we're a very small group, I just want to maybe ask each of you to just tell us what level of education you're representing, um, maybe what area of the state you're in as well. We don't need your full background, but I just would like to invite you to tell us who you are, what your um, education level is, and what, I mean, what you're representing, middle school, high school, elementary, and so on. So Carrie and Sahu, can you jump on for us real quickly? Oh, maybe. We can hear you. You're good. Okay, hello. I'm from Benton Community, which is by Cedar Rapids, kind of, sort of. We have a really big school district, and I teach in the middle school, high school, and we're kind of a middle school, high school program together. Wonderful. Thank you, Carrie. Molly Vanderlinden. All right. All right. Hi. I have one student joining me, Nathan, but his mom's picking him up here soon. Um, I'm in a high school, Spencer Schools, and we're in Northwest Iowa. Um, and I have ninth through 12th grade, level three classroom. Wonderful. Thank you, Molly. Um, Alicia, are you there with us? I'm here. I was, I'm having trouble with my uh, camera. It's, I think I need to update my operating system, but um, I'm actually from Rhode Island. Um, I, I've been following uh, Special Olympics Iowa because I'm just um, in awe of all the incredible things you guys do. We're so small in Rhode Island. I was just so happy to find you know, ideas and things um, that we could do in our school. So I'm, I'm an elementary physical educator and um, we're a unified champion school in Rhode Island, but I just, uh, I like connecting. Wonderful. And thank you so much for, thank you so much for, um, for joining us and following sure. all of our programs, Alicia. I'm um, a little tidbit of note. I used to live in Providence as well as in Newport. Oh, we, wow. can talk about, we can talk about that another time. As you can oh, cool. imagine, I was, I was a Navy brat, so. Oh, great. Um, Angie Chapman. Hi, I'm Angie Chapman. Um, I'm a high school teacher in Des Moines Public Schools. Um, I teach special education, um, nine through 12, significant disabilities. Yes, and Angie was featured in our Respect Week kickoff video. Um, so thank you for that, so Angie. Exciting. And I think we got Alanda, and that might be our last person to introduce right now. Alanda, Ms. Krause, would you jump on for us? Sure. I'm Alanda Krause, and um, we just became a unified champion school last year. So this is our second year. I'm so glad we started last year because this year is so different. Um, I am in an elementary school in Dubuque, Iowa, and I've been doing this for a long time. So I think bringing unified champion schools on board just kind of was the icing so it's been a great partner partnership so yeah wonderful thank you alanda yeah. and she has um a, a few students who are featured in our um cool school polar plunge that we just launched um this past week so um we're excited about that so if you if you are um doing any of the cool school polar plunge activities you might see some of her students um, featured on that with their impact story so next i would like to invite um, a guest speaker a person who has been very instrumental in developing um, some of the best practices with unified champion schools not in iowa alone um, but nationally um, molly mccloskey you see her up there molly has um, she's an executive director of a consulting organization um, for strategic questions, and she's been instrumental in helping the Special Olympics North America team to just navigate and learn and develop best practices for inclusion-based programming within K-12 programming. Um, so Molly, please join us. Thank you so much for jumping on this call and helping me lead this good conversation. 
Uh, hey, thank you, Brian. I am so psyched to be here. Um, I am a consultant with uh, Sona North America. So your loss of Lexi, I've already been in several meetings with her this week. Like we're just pulling her right in. We were in a meeting an hour ago um, together. So we are we are loving the opportunity to really learn from um, Iowa and to uh to share your experience, kind of like Alicia jumping on here from Rhode Island. So uh, I'm an ex educator by training, right? In my heart of hearts, I am an elementary school counselor. When I, when I dream of myself, that's still who I am. Um, and so that means that at this point in the afternoon, we need a hype video, right? Like what I know about us is that we're a little worn out at the end of the day. So I got to go with a hype video to get us started. We are not just athletes. We are the ambassadors of an uprising. Peace for protesters and rebellion against anyone. Cause a fear of difference. Our demands are quality, dignity, and the recognition of our shared humanity. We will not stop or accept anything less. We, we are uh, deserving. When we compete, we're fighting for a more inclusive world. We are champions on the field and for this cause. Today, our world is more divided than ever. And coming together has never been more urgent. Revolution is inclusion! And it's not optional. The only choice you need to make is how you enjoy it. Yeah. The revolution is inclusion and it is not optional. Are you kidding me? Like, if that doesn't raise chills in your arms, I don't know what else. What jumped at you in that video? What'd you guys see? What struck you? I think the words are pretty encouraging, powerful. Yeah. Even I like the, seeing the kids together. I was going to say the images that they show, they're very telling to the whole experience of the, the celebration that's happening. Right. You get a sense of the celebration, the joy, the friendship, all of the parts of Unified Champion Schools. What else? Come on, educators. I know it's late in the day, but you can do this. <laughs> see, see, Molly's an educator herself, and to, to an extent, you know, she she knows the she knows the whole awkward uh, the awkward wait time thing. I am not above some wait time. I mean, their friendships they look absolutely genuine. I just it's not um, it's not fake. You can tell that they really like each other and. You know, I just, I love the videos of them with their arms around each other and they're, they're teammates, they're friends, they're, it's, it's real. I love that, I love that. It's real, it's authentic because that's what this is about. If it's not real and authentic, then we're not, then we haven't really grasped um, what inclusion is all about and what Unified Champion Schools is all about. I feel like that's really at the heart of what we all do in education too, right? Like we got into education because we care about young people. And we know it's sure not just about being able to identify the main idea or decode words or do certain levels of mathematics or anything else that is uh, academic. We know it's important. We know it's necessary. And it's not all that school is about for our kiddos with intellectual disabilities and for our kiddos without intellectual disabilities. So I kind of, I kind of love that the video is really about, look, this is, these are our dreams for all of our kids, period, end of sentence. This is not some kids get that and other kids get something else. This is all of our kids. Get the opportunity to be active physically, get the opportunity to lead, get the opportunity to be valued for their contribution to our schools, period, end of discussion. Nobody's excluded, 
that's the deal from the jump. So pausing just to see if anybody jumps in, right? Like you're, <laughs> um, I want to just leave space so that we really can have a conversation about this um, and think through the work that all of you are already doing, how we ramp that up, what happens next, where the challenge points are. Um, we don't often get a chance to just sit and talk to each other about the good, the bad, and the unified. Um, and so that's where we wanna be today. Um, if I throw out some ideas, then that's a bonus. Um, but I'm really hoping that you have come with some, some questions, some examples, um, some things to think about as we move forward. Brian already put out there that some of the key words we want to talk about today, right, are inclusion. Um, and we all, as educators, we know about academic inclusion. The key to Unified Champion Schools is really social inclusion. When do I have the opportunities to make friends? When, and boy, middle school, high school, adolescence, that's really the point of school. Like I have no time for classes. If I'm a 13 year old, it's all about my friends. Um, it's all about the social environment. It's all about social status and feeling like you're a part of something, feeling like you're um, connected to your school, to your peers, which leads right into that next word for Brian, what's meaningful inclusion. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to talk about that. Is that was that an invitation? Yeah. Great. Okay. So so as, as we all know, inclusion is it's an important word. Inclusion is a word that we use a lot. You see our shirts. Um, hopefully, you guys have all received your shirts. Alicia, you probably didn't get any shirts, so shoot me an email and I'll get something in the mail for you. Um, but you know, inclusion and meaningful inclusion, and I don't think people realize that there's actually a difference. Um, and I I passionately think about the two often. Um, and I think the reason why I do is because I think personally, I think I see the difference between the, the two. Inclusion, um, and, we, and we hear this phrase a lot at conferences that we go to and whatnot, inclusion is like an invitation to a dance. It's an invitation to a party. You know, you got a student at school who's invited somebody to come to the school dance. That's wonderful. That is inclusion. But the difference is, is meaningful inclusion is the invitation to dance when you're at the dance, or it's the invitation to, um, to play a game when you're at the party. It's an invitation to do something when you're actually at the place. Inclusion or an invitation is the inclusion, but the meaning behind doing something, we need to make sure that we're, when we're including students, when we're including other people of all abilities, um, that we're that we're putting some meaning behind it. Um, but, but inclusion is, is it's, the, it's the first step to it. It's to make that happen. And then putting meaning behind it is where students and other individuals, they're gonna really gain those friendships. They're really gonna grasp a hold of, wow, this is something that I can do. This is something that people truly want me to participate in. Um, and so I think the two words there, inclusion and meaningful inclusion, while they're different, they're also the same, or while they're the same, they're still different, but they're still both very important things to think about. Um, and I think it's important that we as the educators or we as the developers of our unified programs in our schools, it's important that we recognize um, both of them um, and, and recognize what they both truly are at what they are. I also put the word fear of difference in there. Um, were you gonna mention anything on that or do you want me to jump on that, Molly? Keep going, Brian, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to follow up, so keep going. Okay, great. I am admitting one more person here real quick. I'm going to give Kelly a quick second to actually get connected before we continue. Kelly Mackey is a high school teacher in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, she's almost connected there. No, no, I... Kelly, are you there? Great. I think Kelly, I think she is. <laughs> Hey Brian, why don't you why don't you go ahead and let me in? Let me jump in okay. here if I can. Yeah. So Brian started down the path of talking about inclusion and maybe the difference between inclusion and meaningful inclusion. 
we actually have this really cool activity um, that that Brian's going to lead in next month's um, uh, time together. But I want to give you a little preview of this. And so I'm, I'm stealing Brian's thunder a little. I think it'll take us down the path that he's starting to go. So we have this activity, we call them um, inclusion tiles. And it's actually a game that your young people can play on our generationunified.org website, right? Mostly middle and high, but really your elementary school with maybe a little um, support can also do this. And I won't show you the entire activity, but part of it is taking these cards that you're looking at right now, right? Acceptance, avoidance, exclusion, fear of difference, inclusion, lasting friendship, meaningful inclusion, situational friendship, and tolerance, and reordering them into an inclusion journey. What's an inclusion journey look like at the beginning? What's it look like at the end? So what would you tell me? I can move all these cards, right? That's going to be, that's the activity. So where would you, what would you put up there in the one slot? When, when, what does someone feel when they're really at the beginning of an inclusion journey? I think I do this activity differently every time I've done it. I, I typically would put either avoidance or fear of difference. Okay. How about others? Does that make sense? Do you agree? Would you do something different? Kelly says exclusion or fear of difference in the chat. Thank you for helping me with the chat. I appreciate that. So exclusion might move up there. Right, so it might go exclusion, avoidance, what else? What would you I, put after that? My reasoning behind putting fear of difference typically before avoidance is because uh, that's just, I think that's in my experience, that's just what I've seen. If someone is fearful to, you know, talk to one another, if, if you're afraid of someone else's difference, you're going to avoid them. But I can also see, this is where my mind flips. And I'm like, I can also see avoidance being first because, you know, if you're being avoided, that instills a fear inside of you. I'm too indecisive for this. <laughs> I love it. And Carrie Ann's jumping in and Angie's jumping in that exclusion. Now we've got a little debate over fear of difference and avoidance that Lexi just um, captured, I think, for us, right? Do, am I afraid of difference? So I avoid. Do I avoid? And that reinforces my fear of difference. Let's, let's pretend that that's our top line. What would your next line look like? What would you put next? Tolerance, Carrie Ann. Okay. So now we've moved from that fear of difference, maybe, and that avoidance into tolerance. In the middle three, I'll typically switch up tolerance, acceptance, and situational friendship. Aha. Uh -huh. Alicia's saying the same thing, right? Okay. So tolerance maybe situational friendship to acceptance. Anybody else? Kelly, I love it. Teach, girl. Just do it. Just teach. Do the whole thing. This is how we roll. All right, let's think about that last line. Ah, tolerance, situational friendship. Yep, Angie, you're agreeing with that lineup. All right, so this is kind of the I, progression. Go ahead. I almost wonder if we slid lasting friendship to the end, if that might finish it out, because you then, or maybe not quite finish it out, but I almost think that might lead to it. 
situational friendship? I sim similarly think uh, I typically do put lasting friendship as the last one, just because that's out of everything, that's what I would want at the very end of any relationship is to have that lasting relationship where, you know, even if you're not talking for a week, you can still have that relationship. And I think that's a big part of being a genuine friend is having that commitment behind it. Yeah. And I'm just now seeing in the chat that Alicia also said inclusion, meaningful inclusion and lasting that that must just be the Northeast in us. We're on the same page. <laughs> I'm going to be the devil's advocate and and put out kind of, Brian, what you said about inclusion and meaningful inclusion. And what if we put inclusion after tolerance? Because, hey, ah. everybody's invited to the prom, but doesn't mean we're actually going to yeah. connect or become uh -huh. friends. So then maybe situational friendships occur because we're forced to be together. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, Alanda. One of the beauties of this is that everybody has a different perspective. And that you're, that's right, Lex, perspective. We all have many different perspectives and ways to, to order these things. And so that's why I thought, let, let's pop this up in the middle of our conversation about inclusion and meaningful inclusion, because it's both really valuable for us to think through this, but this also becomes a really fun exercise that you can do in a variety of ways with young people, with, as Brian said, teams of teachers. It is fascinating when you watch the young people order these um, and what order they put them in, how they can describe exactly what tolerance looks like compared to acceptance. Um, and there's some very fun ways that you can play with this that Brian will share more about, um, including like a, a heads up version of it, where um, a young person describes uh, the, the, what a behavior might look like and you name the stage um, that they're in. There are no right answers, but we thought um, maybe this would be a cool way to kind of jump into this conversation. Yeah. The, uh, the heads up the heads up version is actually my favorite one to do with um, groups um, as I said in the in the chat that we can do this with large groups Lexi and I have led this with um, groups of about a hundred or so we have a set of 300 sets printed so we could actually come and do this with leadership teams in your schools um, when your schools are comfortable with social distancing guidelines and whatnot we're we're certainly happy I'm actually going to be going to a school. Um, next month with a smaller leadership team of about 15 people and leading this. So I'd be happy to come do this with your administration or students and so on. So uh, it's a great, it's a great, great um, um, activity that encourages thought provoking conversations and helps us to understand sp some specific words. Can I talk about fear of difference? Yeah. So Fear of difference is one of the ones that I just absolutely also passionately like to talk about. Um, and I think it's because we're faced with the fear of difference um, as, as people all the time. You know, we have fear of difference that we don't even know about that. That's not even a terminology that we even know, um, but, we, but we face it, um, especially as um, young people who are just kind of learning the world. You know, you're, you're so young, you're two and three years old, you're learning to step and you learning to walk and then you hit that age of three and five years old and you're starting to learn how to read a little bit you're starting to work, learn a few things my daughter's five years old right now and she's loving the fact that she's learning to read and she only knows how to read the word t-h-e and she loves it anytime she recognizes it in our books she just loves it and so we're learning all these things but one of the things that we learn um in that middle school high school range is the fear of difference but we don't often know that we're learning it we're just experiencing it we're not really knowing and recognizing what it truly is for what it is but we're just experiencing it and so what fear of difference is um for example let's just say maybe you're a student at your um at a lunch table and you see another student rocking forward and backwards clicking snapping making noises and doing things that might be different than what typically people do. Or maybe you are that person who's walking down the hy or the grocery, I'm not gonna say hy because we got Rhode Islanders, um, walking down the grocery 
um, store aisle and you turn the corner and you see that person rocking or you see that person doing something that's different and your immediate reaction is to not say something rude, but your reaction is to turn around and go to the other aisle and come back to that aisle when that person's not there. Or your reaction is to not sit at that lunch table or to not go to that area of the library. Um, that's the fear of difference. Um, and it, the fear of difference in our reaction doesn't mean that we're doing something mean by reacting the way that we are by going to a different aisle. That just means that we are fearful of that difference. Um, we don't know how to react or interact to individuals of different abilities in some cases. Um, and it's very, very common for middle school and high school students um, to instantly turn around and say, I'm not going that way. And we find that with adults too. Um, people in our world as special educators or individuals who are working with Special Olympics, Maybe not so much. Maybe we we recognize it, and maybe we're still going to take that dive and go down that um, um down that uh, aisle at the grocery store in hopes that maybe you'll have a fun interaction and you'll get to encourage somebody. Um, but the fear of difference is something that we experience often, um, and people don't really understand it. And I I think it's important that we as educators um, in inclusive environments that we help our young people to learn and understand. The fear of difference. I think that's incredibly important. And understand truly what the fear of difference is and that it's okay to experience it, um, but more importantly that it's important for us to learn how to interact and react to different situations. Does that make sense? kind of went on for a little while about it, but I kind of like that phrase fear of difference. And Oh, Brian, you just you just shared something that I think is so powerful, right? I think these tiles are incredibly important for us to use with young people and for them to understand each other's experience, different circumstances where our young people um, with and without intellectual disabilities may have gone through this kind of inclusion experience. And we cannot skip ourselves, both because we may have inclusion journeys through these tiles. And because part of our role as educators is to facilitate movement through this, right? To move our young people, if they are rooted in fear of difference, how do we jump them past avoidance and tolerance, maybe to inclusion? How do we help them take the next steps? And I, I wanna be real candid, I'm not a special educator, right? That's not my background, that's not my degree, but I know I've got a place in here, right? I might be the physics teacher. I might be the uh, custodian. I might be any role in a school and I can find my space in facilitating movement here and growth for young people. And of course they can facilitate each other's growth here too. And that's, I think there's so much power like in the lines in between. What happens there? What actions do we take? What conversations do we have? Stopping to see who else wants to talk. I actually was about to say, I think we should invite any conversation if anybody has anything they would like to jump in and say or um, if, if anything has stood out, the fear of difference, maybe you might want to share anything on that or share anything about inclusion and meaningful inclusion. would love to invite you to, to ask questions or invite you to just chat and say anything that you've had experiences with. I see that we are actually joined by an athlete. Um, his, his name is Dean. Um, he's on Kelly Mackey's screen. He's he's right there with Kelly. Hi, Adine. Oh, Brian. <laughs> Adine is a fantastic oh, athlete. Three athletes with me. I oh, have three. Kate, okay. Kiana and Adine. Okay, wonderful. Very good. Um, they have they have such a wonderful group at Roosevelt. They're actually our um, first nationally recognized unified champion school in Iowa. So good job to Miss Mackey and all of you for that. And. Um, and they're very well engaged in joining in conversations as well. So thank you guys. Oh, congratulations, Roosevelt. In my volunteer life, I chair the certifying body for the national uh, 
recognition program. So I was part of saying, holy cow, Roosevelt rocks. And we absolutely must name them a banner school. Oh my gosh, I remember reading your application and jumping up and down. You and I were doing great things. I love it. One of the things that I... One of the things that I do, Molly, when, I mean, um, yeah, Molly, when they start having conversations is I always tell them that the application process, I want it to be done with the students leading it and having the assistance. So, so the Dean is one of the student leaders that was helping on that application process. So, yeah. Thank you, Adeen, for leading the way, man. And we're excited to celebrate with ESPN in a couple months, next month too. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's going to be big. Roosevelt was selected by ESPN as one of the top five unified champion schools in the country. So that was very exciting. So Carrie, I see that you might be off mute. Were you wanting to jump in with anything? Yes, but I didn't want to interrupt their takeaway from Roosevelt because that is exciting. You can hear me better if I have the mask down. But um, the uh, moving kids along doesn't have to be hard but I think it has to be um, purposeful. And so for me, I make sure that I chair activities that are not necessarily inclusive for students with special needs. So I am robotics coach and I also do prom. And when I hold meetings, I hold the meetings in my um, homeroom with my special education students. And so if they wanna be involved, they have to just get used to hanging out. And I think that's, the first step and at first it's a little hard like just to come in the door but they get used to it and then that um bridges to yeah situational friendship bridges to friendships and also um it helps empower kids to stick up for my kiddos when they're in the halls hey i know him if you're saying something then I can stand up. I know him, you're, you're wrong, or that's not nice, or come and learn. So it's yeah. not, it doesn't have to be a big thing, but it, I think it has to be intentional. Yeah. So, so you just used a word that's incredibly important right there. I'm gonna show it to you in two places. I'm gonna show it to you on my shirt, it says intentional. And I'm gonna show it to you on the back of our screen, it says intentional. So Lexi and I worked on um, on the, uh, the theme and logo for this year. And she came up with um, the, the whole idea of using the definition and it looked great. And then we um, firmed up the definition on what it would look like for inclusion definition and the intentional act. Um, and Molly and I spoke about that a few moments before, um, before we actually started the call is the definition of what we called inclusion for our inclusion definition this year is the intentional act of bringing together students and people of all abilities. And, and that's exactly right, um, intentional. And just what you said, uh, what you were just discussing there was all about intention. Um, and so that's incredibly important for us in our positions that we're trying to develop more unified and more inclusive schools um, to realize that we have to do everything that we are doing with intention. Yeah, great. Loving this conversation. I know. Uh, I know we actually planned it out to go um, for an hour. Um, I don't really know what else Molly has to share. I would like to invite you to share anything more that you do have. Otherwise, um, if there's not much more, we can continue for a few moments of just conversation and questions, um, and we might even get a few minutes out early. I'm always about the questions. I do want to share one thing because kind of like the, the inclusion tiles um, at the SONA level, and I know at the, at the Special Olympics Iowa level, it's our job to help you then be intentional. What tools can we give you? And so just because Alicia's on the call, I actually want to show you something that she happens to be involved in. Um, and I didn't know she was going to be here today. So this is a total bonus. But hot off the presses, we're going to be releasing in the next um, few weeks, it'll be coming your way soon, a brand new uh, online training course for that's specifically for educators. 
So teachers talking to teachers about uni what unified champion schools means. And instead of you having to stand up every year and do a 45 minute gig at a staff meeting, as you bring on new staff, you can share this with them. You can, as you want somebody to get involved, you think, oh man, that counselor, that coach, that gen ed teacher, that principal really has a heart for unified champion schools. This is going to be a resource for them. Um, real advanced organizer, because in education, we can't just say preview. We have to say advanced organizer. Um, is that there's going to be elementary specific versions. How do you do this in an elementary school? How do you do it in a middle school? And how do you do it in a high school? So you also, the intro course has all three levels, um, but there are versions that'll be out by the end of um, this school year, actually. So you can think about it over summer to kind of help you plan. And I'm just going to invite Alicia, if she wants to say anything, she's featured in this course. Oh, sure. Um, it's, it's an incredible course. I wish um, this had been available when we first started, just because in uh, elementary school, you know, um, I, I would go online and I'd look at Facebook pages and websites and everything that I found was for middle and high school. Um, elementary, it seemed like it was relatively new. So we kind of had to create everything either like tailoring down what middle and high school was doing. And, um, you know, in Rhode Island, uh, we have to account for every single minute that we have our students and everything has to be educational. Um, they, ha they have to have so many minutes of recess. So it's just, we have to calculate every minute of the day. So when I was originally starting uh, this program in our school, I really had to tie it into what teachers were already doing so that it wasn't, it was, I don't want to, I hate to use the word take away because it's not taking away. It's only adding, you know, more uh, depth to their curriculum, but I had to find a way to tie it into common core and standards. So this, it's kind of, it's already done for you when you watch this, it, it, it tells you how to do it. it. It shows you how to do it too. And, um, the unified classroom is amazing too, with the lessons that were written. Um, I can't encourage people enough to use that. That was um, incredible uh, resource to send out to my classroom teachers this year. Yeah, if you don't know about unified classroom, oops, sorry. We, um, this is also, you can find this through generationunified.org. Um, and each month there's a theme with uh, plug and play lessons for you. Um, you they're on Google Drive or on um, uh, Dropbox. So you can just download them, whichever system works better for you. Themes have been empowerment, teamwork, belonging, wellness. And um, I can't see my own screen well enough to know connectedness, um, but they're also done by grade level. So the K2, there's K2 specific versions, three, five, six, eight, nine, 12. These are all aligned to Common Core um, and feature videos that also let you do some cool things. Like you high school folks, if you've got some really cool seniors, um, they could actually watch one of the inside inclusion videos and then run a discussion with ninth graders during an advisory period or something like that. There's really powerful ways. Um, our athletes are featured in it. Evie and Joy, some of our favorite Iowans are featured. Um, so uh, they're, they're generationunified.org. If you haven't been there, it's got like ridiculously cool stuff that's easy to integrate. Yeah, the lesson plans are, they're ready. They're ready to, like, they're make it, not even take it, they're done. Mm -hmm. You open them and you can use them. Like, I suggest you make sure that, um, you know, the technology is there. Like, there's jam boards and videos. It's really interactive. And uh, we've done, um, we started today for uh, Respect Day. Uh, and I, th I think we introduced connect connectedness since that was the theme of uh, the week. 
or of the whole program. But anyway, it's just, um, you open the folders up and the lessons are there. Um, there's like lead up activities and then it goes into more, you know, of the meteor stuff that you would go into later on. Um, and for elementary, there's uh, like Molly said, K through two and then three through five. And uh, the, the lessons are, they're so top quality. They're linked to standards. There's great uh, thought provoking questions. Um, the videos are, are awesome. So I just, I can't encourage you enough to check it out. It really, it was great. And it was such a time saver too, because it's all, it's all sitting there and ready for you to use. So it's amazing. Unsolicited pluck. I love it. So friends, you'll see in the in the chat box, I've been dropping a few things there. Um, and in resources and tools, it truly is, um, it's important that we provide you with the resources and tools that you need to do what you want to do. Uh, when I very first have conversations with you as schools, Carrie Ann, I think I met with you three years ago, we might have maybe had pizza at Pizza Ranch, maybe you and a few students maybe, and then Alanda, I think maybe we've met a time or two, maybe. Um, and, and one of the things that I always tell our schools is that um, we don't want to join, we don't want you and your school to join our programming and doing exactly what it is that we say we want you to do. Um, because it's not our jobs to necessarily set out a, um, a, 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 a What's the inclusion? What's the, what's the word I'm looking for, Molly? You used it the other day in a call um, uh, with educators, a rubric. It's not our yeah. job to set out a rubric of specific standards of what you have to do and so on, but it's our job to provide you with ideas. It's our job to provide you with opportunities. It's our job to provide you with resources to do the things that you need to do. One of the things that I like to tell our, our schools and our educators and our administrators that we're working with is that Schools in Los Angeles might be different than schools in small town Iowa. Schools in Rhode Island might be different than schools in small town Iowa. Schools in Des Moines might be different than schools in small town Iowa. Um, so we see it all. And so a lot of the resources that we have um, provided to us from SONA and resources that we create in our own state, um, they've been created by educators of all different backgrounds educators of all different geographic areas and regions and things and so it's important that you all recognize that so that you don't think that you have to do everything exactly as it shows in the book um, it's important that you take those resources and develop what you can in your school to make your school more inclusive that's what my hope vision and dream is for the schools in Iowa um, and I want to be supportive to you in any possible way that I can um, from our office. It's not me, it's our office. Um, so I want our office to be able to support you in any way that we possibly can. So um, as we continue working together as Unified Champion Schools, then always feel welcome to shoot me an email. You see it in the chat. Um, many of you have my email, I'm sure. Um, and just say, hey, Brian, what can we do? What, what can you provide to me to help make our school more inclusive? Um, I have students, our teachers say, hey, I had some students bullying other students. What can we do? And we'll strategize and we'll make some things happen. Wonderful. Any questions? I think we're getting to that point where maybe it might be, might be time for us to let everybody go home and get some dinner. I'm not getting dinner. I'm going to go scooter with my daughter. <laughs> so great. Molly, do you have anything else that you'd like to add? Just that I'm very grateful to have the time to chat with all of you, um, and I hope I get more opportunities to learn from you, uh, a different conversation maybe about what you're doing in your schools, because I am one of the people creating some of those resources, and I'm all about stealing your ideas. <laughs> Molly, I appreciate you. Um, we've had a few calls in the last weeks. So I really appreciate you joining and um, just providing some good thoughts and um, some best practices and some resources and whatnot. I appreciate you taking the time to, to join our friends in Iowa, as well as in Rhode Island. Great. 
teachers, friends, I'm sure I will see your smiling faces around here in Iowa. I appreciate all of you for doing what you're doing in your schools and in your communities. Hello, Adine, I see you waving. Um, I think I will let you all go and we'll see. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly, for letting me wave at all of our friends. Perfect. Thank you, friends. Oh, yes, Molly said, yeah, I'm going to be joining her on a uh, national panel next week. So I appreciate that invitation as well, Molly. So goodbye, friends. Have a great evening.